Follow all Moser's news on his website, www.mosiers.com. And on his Facebook Moser's and Instagram Moser's 13 page 2. For daily exclusive publications. Hello and welcome on Moisieu. And the today topic for this new Quick Friday is the mistake not to make when you walk with arpeggios. And you want to make some splits with your parts. But just before to start, if you're not a Moisture follower, please click on subscribe and click on the bell to be informed when I release a new video. If you like that video content, please click on like. And if you want to support the channel for the free video I release for you here, use the super thanks. For the today's topic, when we work with arpeggios, not always but often, we'll play our melody line here on the right hand side. We'll play chords a bit like an arranger on the left side. We don't want the melodic line we play on the right, influence the chords we play on the left. The first idea that may come to your mind, and it's certainly not the right one, is to say to yourself, I'm going to split from this screen here, home. I'm going to go here for my drum kit. Then I can use the keyboard pad, but I'll show you with the dial wheel. I'll trigger the arpeggio, and you'll quickly understand what's going on. And yet I've still got my finger pressed down on my note. There's nothing there, why? Because here, when I split from the home page on this view, this display mode, I'm not reducing the arpeggio rendering, I'm reducing the audio engine by saying. You can't go and play sound any higher than that. Is that a bad thing to do? Not necessarily, because it can be a good trick for you but another idea. Listen to an arpeggio like this. And then you think, that's good, the rhythm is great, the sound of the drum kit new oak is perfect. The tambourines, on the other hand, are a real pain in my ears, and I'd like to remove them. This could be a good way of removing the tambourines, but only in that context. If there are instruments other than the tambourine, on other arpeggio variations that interest you, they won't be there. Here I've kept the hi-hats, the bass drum, the snare drum, the toms, and I've removed the tambourine, which was bothering me. So where do we do our split? We'll go to navigation, we're in edit part, we'll go to ARP, and the splits are on the common screen. This is the note limit arpeggio, meaning that the instrument can play all its notes, but we're going to make it take two things into account. Firstly, you only take into account the melodic parts I'm going to play, or the chords, in the playing zone area I'm going to define to you. This can be on the top too, it's up to you, but in general, it's often like that on the bottom, here in my example. Secondly, you only trigger the arpeggio if I play in this range. Note limit takes into account these two things. On the other hand, if I want it to be this one, I don't forget to remove my little keyboard. You see, my arc master is on here, I can play my melodic parts, which will have absolutely no influence on my arpeggio, and here I can play my chords. Obviously, for chords, the drums alone aren't really the right example, of course, I'm going to play my chords with the other instruments, I'm going to set arp on, and when I want to trigger my arpeggio, The advantage of having chosen a drum kit is that it's very simple and practical to explain these two points. To finish this video, let's use a little acoustic bass while we're at it. Coming back to the limitation, I'm going to take up an arpeggio, and this way I'll modify its rendering, 
So let's say this is what it originally did. That's what the arpeggio does, and I say to myself, I'm going to reduce it, I'm going to change it to C3 as example, let's set it like this. Here we have the same thing, if I start to reduce. Well, maybe that's a bit too much. You can see that some notes are missing, which could be a way of rearranging an arpeggio, but there's something else I'd like to draw your attention to. It's the position or inversion, where you're going to play the chords. There, you see, it gave a certain notes on this position, there if I change my inversion. Here, it's really more interesting, even if it does not play some notes. So be careful, if you say to yourself, well, I've seen Joel's video, it's nice, I'm going to remix my arpeggios a bit. Be careful, you also need to look at the position and chord inversion you're going to play, to get a result that's conclusive. That's for one part, but if you start doing that on two, three or four parts, you're going to have to find the right balance. This is video ending. I hope you have liked it. I hope you have find it interesting. As a reminder, you can book your Moesio Masterclass directly on the Music Arcspace platform. See you soon for one of our Moesio videos. Bye. Would you like to discover, learn, or improve your knowledge of your Yamaha synthesizer or stage keyboard? Book your Moesers Master Class now. Your private session is conducted online through Zoom. Take all benefit of Moesers expertise, Yamaha synthesizers and stage keyboard specialist and consultant for Yamaha Music Europe and France. As member of international Yamaha Tech Talk live team, music hackspace instructor and host of the Camelot Pro Sessions. Joel take care of your experience level. Whether you're a beginner or a skilled user, get the most out of your Yamaha synthesizer, stage keyboard, John Mela software suite or Camelot Pro. Book your session for your personal Moesers one-to-one session. It's available for users all over the world through Music Hackspace platform. It's easy. Select your date and time from the Moesers calendar available slots on your time zone. Thank you for watching this Moesers video. Do not forget to click on like. Subscribe and click on the bell to be informed when a new video is online. Do not hesitate to write a comment or ask a question. See you soon, bye!